In my CCDA series here at CBT Nuggets, we go over switch port mode and dynamic trunk protocol. But I really wanted to give that some intense coverage and let's do so. Let's look at best practices for the switch port mode command in this micro nugget. As you're probably aware, we learned this back in the CCNA training. The switch port mode command allows you to control something called dynamic trunk protocol. What's interesting about dynamic trunk protocol is that we don't need it. We don't want it. We don't need Cisco's assistance in forming trunk links. In fact, from a security perspective, we definitely are not interested in it. We don't want trunk links to be able to be formed dynamically in our environment. So best practices regarding switch port mode deal with turning off dynamic trunk protocol. Let me show you how easily this is done. First of all, let's talk about an access port. When you want to create an access port, what you do is you go under that interface and you say, switch port mode access. Yeah, you force the port to be an access port. This is a dynamic trunk protocol mode of off. Yeah, it means you are not going to trunk. You are going to be an access port. What we can then say is switch port no negotiate. I love it. We are saying, look, we not only want to be an access port, but we don't even want to deal with dynamic trunk protocol. We do not want to listen. We do not want to send DTP frames. We just absolutely stubbornly do not want to participate in the dynamic trunk protocol negotiation process. I love it. And then obviously, commonly, what you would do is you would go in and say switch port access VLAN and you would give the particular VLAN that this port is to participate in. Awesome. So there is a best practices configuration for an access port in our environment. Let's now look at a trunk port. The first thing you need to worry about with a trunk best practice configuration on some devices is you have to go in and you have to set the encapsulation. So we'll say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Now look, this is only required on devices that still support inner switch link encapsulation. And the great news is these devices are getting fewer and fewer out there. They're going the way of the dodo bird. And let's all take a quick moment of silence for our friend, the dodo bird. Okay, now back to the presentation. So on some devices, we need to set the trunk encapsulation. Once we do that, the device will allow us to use this powerful command, switch port mode trunk. What we are doing here is we're setting a dynamic trunk protocol mode of on. Remember, mode access was off. Mode trunk is what's considered a DTP on mode. And then guess what we are going to do? You probably know. We're going to say switch port, no negotiate. That's right. We're going to say you are unequivocally a trunk. That's what we said with switch port mode trunk. And then we went a step further and we said do not participate in dynamic trunk protocol negotiation. I love it. Now, you would typically follow this up with commands that will place more security in your environment. In other words, you would do switch port trunk allowed VLANs. Okay, you would permit only specific VLANs on the trunk. And then since you're in a dot one Q environment, you would go in and say switch port trunk 
native VLAN and you would give your native VLAN commands. And the best practice here is to set the native VLAN to an unused VLAN in your topology so that you're not actually doing anything on the native VLAN. Another thing that you could do is you could choose to tag the native VLAN in order to add security to it if your switches allow that. But we'll focus on the native VLAN in another micro nugget sometime down the road. Our focus here, of course, was on switch port mode and really keying in on just how this command should be used from a best practice perspective. Now, let's talk about a lazy way in which we could use the switch port mode command. This isn't a recommended best practice, but let's just talk about why. Make sure you're aware of why trunks so often form automatically. So you'll take a Cisco switch that Cisco had intended for the access layer a lower end switch, you'll connect it with a couple of links to a higher end switch, a switch that Cisco had anticipated for the distribution layer of your switched architecture. And sure enough, when you run your show interface trunk command, you discover that there are these automatically formed trunk links. Why did it happen? Well, it's DTP, my friends. On the access layer device, Cisco gave this some thought and they said, you know what? We're going to set the switch mode to dynamic auto. This device will form trunk links if asked, but it will not proactively try and form a trunk link. Ah, they did some thought on the distribution layer device and they said, you know what? Let's have it try and form trunks. So it will default to switch port mode dynamic desirable. This combination of auto and desirable is going to form the trunk link. This will trunk if asked. This will indeed ask to form the trunk. Therefore, we get the trunk. When we follow the guidelines in this micro nugget, notice we are doing away with all of this DTP. We're doing away with all of this dynamic automatic forming of trunks with the dynamic trunk protocol. Well, folks, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.